Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is the very first 1080p 60 review, that is 60 frames per second. We're going to take a look at a very highly anticipated model that should be hitting your shelves very soon in three schemes that are currently now released. This is Norfolk Southern, BNSF, and Canadian National Intermountain Tier 4 Jevos. So these will be hitting the shelves and then the other road names including Union Pacific will be coming out later this month. So let's take a look at what you get. MSRP $299.95 for ESU low sound equipped versions, $199.95 for the DCC out of the box that can be DC ran as well versions. And we will do a myriad of tests on these so I'm very excited to dive into this review. Let's go. unbox the locomotive here. I am doing an unboxing because it's a little different packaging than usual in this locomotive. Plastic sleeve, clear sleeve kind of stuck in the box there but that also comes in the package. We'll just let that be. Pull the top off here. This packaging I've seen before, it's a packaging I've seen used on Atlas locomotives where you have two screws in the bottom. So I'll go ahead and unscrew this and then we'll move on. First question I had on this locomotive right out of the box was the sunshades. They are attached in a plastic package here. So usually I skip the installation but I want you guys to get the, the, the view so I will try to install these real quick. In the meantime, you get the operator's guide from Intermountain. If you've purchased Intermountain products before, this is standard what you get. It is a fold out sheet and functions are listed, CVs are listed, and then on the back shell removal is listed and shell removal is a strong point for this locomotive. You just simply remove the couplers and a couple other steps and you're able to lift the shell off. All right, let's take a look at the locomotive. As I mentioned before, the cab window sunshades have to be installed. There are two pegs that fit in two pre-drilled holes. One peg was slightly larger than the hole, so it bent the peg, it broke it off. I placed a dab of glue on there. No big deal. Um, the other one fit in fine. So you've got handrail stanchions and the safety chain that's really nice up front here. You've got the cab door with the cab window. door window. You've got LED headlights, sand filler hatches up top with grab irons, the BNSF swoosh logo on the front, coupler cut levers, and the actual handrails there. Paint looks evenly applied in one little small area. You've got a paint chip. You've got handrails on the snow plow, accessory hoses, metal coupler, spring loaded with a, gl a magnetic glad hand on it there. And a climber is nice and straight. Looks assembled very, very well. The beautiful, beautiful tent job. Um, this is kind of a personal thing of mine. I've been wanting a manufacturer to do a good tent job on a locomotive that's actually what you see out in the real world and they nailed it here with Intermountain. You've got the mirror in the cab, 3849's clear. You've got beautiful truck detail up front but it gets even better in the back. Jacking pad, dynamic brake fan intakes here. The PTC antenna with all the little detail detail looks straight, nothing broken off there. You've got lift rings on the side of the body, a little hard to see against the grain here. Handrail stanchions are good, firm, all the way along the side here. Handrails look great. On the back, I'm gonna have to zoom in on the back truck because it's just so darn impressive. They've got truck chain detail We've got that tier 4 radiator, the exhaust, this one is squared off, they, they are going to release the other versions, the ones where they've tapered them later on. You've got a safety tread on the walkway there, good 
cabinet compartment detail molded into the body. Brake wheel is nice and flush. It doesn't look too three-dimensional or tacky. I don't see any flashing on the handrails or brake wheel. That back truck chain detail is just amazing. Those are actual chains. They move. They are not uh, you know, fixed in position. You got sanding lines. You've got the yellow safety marking along the side, FRA marking along the deck there. It's also a C4 truck, so it's got the C4 detail where I believe the center wheel set can come up on the real thing and it just operates off the outer two. Back detail, camera's uh, giving me a little hard time on focus here, but back detail, you've got that big tier 4 radiator, the grills up top are beautifully done, uh, there's no warping, there's nothing um, negative about those, you've got handrails on the back, coupler stand, got the uh, Looks like a light bar just poked out a little bit. I pushed that back in. That's the lighting, basically deck lighting. I'll probably think of the correct word in a minute. But beautiful detail now on the back here, or zoomed back out a little bit. The fan grills back here you can see the X bracing behind them it's not see-through I'll just double check with a phone light here you can't see through the body but you can see through to the X bracing a little hard to pick up on camera but I can see the X bracing right here but I hear they have the correct number of corrugations in the, the grill which makes it very hard for the see-through detail so it's kind of a trade-off you either have correct corrugations and no see-through co complete see-through detail or incorrect corrugations and see-through detail so uh, very nicely done there except especially the x bracing you can see so i think it's see-through enough in my personal opinion looking at the paint again on the back it looks good um, a little little point in the handrail right there Looks like it could be uh, flattened out. Yep, just kind of did. Uh, this had popped out of, of the hole. Oh, pop that back in, no problem. That was easy. So stuff like that I get on almost every model I review. There's usually a little correction you have to make. No big deal. So overall, so far, a beautiful underbody detail there. ET44C4 written right there. So far everything looks great. A couple of minor things I mentioned and uh, we're going to move on and show you the other schemes real quick and not be so picky on the detail but just demonstrate the other schemes for you that are out. Alright let's take a look at the CN version now, another colorful version here. First thing you'll notice probably right off the bat in the front is this light right above the ditch lights which is the DPU light and that's a CN specific detail there those are operational and we'll check those out when we're running but a lot of the same stuff I'm not going to re-mention I'll cover things I didn't mention before you got etched metal windshield wipers are very thin if they're not etched metal uh, again great tinting You've got the different antenna arrays that are both road name and even delivery specific, depending on if it's later on or earlier in the delivery, like the BNSF versions have two different uh, PTC antenna arrays. A lot of under walkway details on these as well. Um, the actual chains in the back, the handbrake chains are suspended by a spring. You can see right there. If you look very closely right here, you can see the e-bell that's mounted right in the front of the fuel tank there, fuel tank sight glass, emergency shutoff button. I don't know if I mentioned before, but the radiator grills, both the top and the sides there, are etched metal. Uh, that's probably why they're so razor sharp and straight, uh, just perfect in appearance. You can see a little better the X-bracing there. 
in the radiator fan grill see-through area back there on the back end another sorry this camera doesn't want to focus perfectly all the time but on the back end you've got another DPU light and you can see where the walkway lighting is there's front and rear walkway lighting on all versions um, there's a little hole right here in between the two rear stanchions on the main body that is the walkway lighting and we'll look at that in detail as well again just a slight break in the paint on the handrails now another CN detail uh, for snow and ice is the see-through walkways a little hard to see right now but um, black is hard to pick up but you've got see-through walkway detail I've cast a little more light on it so you can see it better that is a see-through walkway it allows the snow and ice to accumulate less on the walkways for the crews and the Canadian National uh, we'll continue on on this side you can see the X bracing very well you've got warning yellow warning a uh, paint yellow paint for the steps for the crews to easily see where the steps are and that beautiful uh, interior cab detail as well no cab figures but uh, personally as a modeler I usually don't inject my personal opinion much because I know everybody's got different ones but you're gonna have really tinted windows no real need for cab figures um, but you do have a cab interior detail all right we are simply spending too much time on detail so this is going to be a 360 so we can catch back up Norfolk Southern version last but not least PTC antenna way is different obviously road specific more X bracing easily to see in the radiator uh, grills uh, you've got just a lot of nice detail in S specific here don't really have time to go into it without making this review six hours long so there is the NS version in its entirety. Cab sunshades were installed, no problem. Easily popped right in. Didn't have that issue I had on the first one. Probably operator error. Let's move on to actual operation of these locomotives. Now the first thing with the ESU is you have to do the startup sequence, which is F8, I believe. We're going to go through some sounds here. I have to actually turn off sound functions. We're previously on, but here we go with the bell. Really nice volume. There's no reson resonance or anything. Very crystal clear sound. Now the horn F2 you hit and it also triggers the bell as well. That is prototypically correct. Now that's all done with F2, there's no short horn, uh, very responsive ESU decoders allow you to do short horn very easily with F2 just by lightly pressing. F3's coupler, F4 is dynamic brake, but I think it has to be moving. this up a little bit. Now 
really uh, dynamic brake engage there. Just a little bit. F5 is number board lights. These are lit number boards. If I haven't mentioned it, they also have rotating bearing caps. Front ditch lights are F6. F7 is the dimmer. F8 turns off. Prime mover turns it, shuts it down basically. You've got drive hold and independent brake F9 and 10. You can actually use that to brake the locomotive. It's a nice ESU feature. F11, the walkway lights. Kill a little bit of lights, but right there in the center of the ditch lights, you can see the walkway light. I'm going to turn the ditch lights off so you can see it even a little better. That is front and rear triggered by F11. All right, on the CN specifically, you have a DPU light. So when you're in reverse, like right now, I've got it in reverse, you hit F12, you get that red light above the ditch light right here. So it's already in reverse, so you can push the consist correctly and have that DPU light. Now if I switch to forward, the back DPU light comes on. So it will simply turn off the headlight and ditch lights and put on the DPU light. Some of the most industry groundbreaking things are occurring right now in between the walkway lighting, the DPU lighting, very, very nicely done so far by Intermountain. Quick demo of the ditch light flash rate. Those can be adjusted with CVs. The ditch light, as one gets brighter, the other one starts to fade out. It doesn't fade out completely either one, but there you have the flash rate. I'm going to move this thing out of the box, one speed step. No adjustments to CVs have been done. You may notice the rotating bearing caps on the wheels. It is one speed step out of 126 MRC Prodigy Elite. Very, very smooth. No noticeable lurch. You can see for yourself though. Two speed steps. Three. So you get that rotating cap, bearing cap detail as we go by. Four. And five, and you can get a real nice, super detailed look of the locomotive at that angle. One in reverse. Two. Three, four, and five. Very, very smoothly in forward and, and backwards operation. All right, we're going to take a look at the weight on this. The weight is one pound, 8.9 ounces. That's 24.8. 24.9 ounces, it fluctuates a little bit. 705 grams, 0 0.705 kilograms. So over a pound and a half in the locomotive. So one pound, 8.9 ounces. Now I don't usually do this, but for the sake of comparison, the last ES44 AC, this would be a tier three release from Intermountain, one pound, 2.4 ounces. So as you can see, this has probably almost 30, I don't know, I'm bad at math, 20-30% more weight added to it on the actual locomotives. And I know there's some differences obviously in characteristics, but they intentionally have added more weight and that's a great improvement. I know a lot of people are interested in pull tests, so we're going to do that right now.
sound off. Holy smokes. I don't know if we're going to break five or not. 5.1. 5.1 ounces. All right, let's go to the coupler height check. I need a little faith from you guys that I will report any coupler height issues on the other two locomotives, but for this one, I'm gonna show you on film here. Be a judge for yourself. It looks almost directly on point. For the rear, let's check the front. Coming in for the couple, and again, looks pretty much direct. So good NMRA coupler height. I did want to mention on the pull test, five ounces equals out to almost 75 cars. Can sense this video is getting really long, so I'm just gonna show one NMRA wheel gauge test. Again, if there's any issues just like with coupler height, I will report those to you in the closing comments. Um, but so far we were looking good on an MRA gauge as well and coupler height. So Intermountain's complying with all the NMRA rules, no problem. Well guys, I've had a blast doing this review. The Tier 4 Jeevos from Intermountain, the first three schemes, BNSF, NS, and Canadian National, great locomotives overall. Intermountain has greatly stepped up their game in detail, pulling power, the window tinting, I mean, everything is just amazing. The only issues I could find are things I've found on lots of locomotives. Almost 90% of my reviews have a handrail that's popped out somewhere or, you know, a tiny little snafu. Uh, I showed those to you guys to just be completely transparent, but it was nothing that couldn't be fixed very, very easily. Yes, you have to install cab, cab window sunshades yourself. It takes a couple seconds a piece. The only problems I had were on that first set where I broke a peg off. And I attribute that to operator error because they've all fit in the hole. I just didn't have it angled correctly. I'm going to leave you with a run-by of two BNSF locomotives pulling a lot of these cars. I'm going to cut the consist short. You'll just see if some cars go by because the, loc the review has been so long. If you want to see run-bys of the other schemes or more run-bys of the other schemes, I've got them paired up and we'll be putting run-bys on my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash HO scale product reviews. So be sure to check out the run-bys as they go on later in the next week or few weeks online there with some HD footage as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care. <laughs>